Hello, everybody, and welcome back once more to Anime Yay or Nay. I am the Outback Al. I'm Hot for Justice. I'm Yin and Young. I'm Chibi Do. And I'm Envy Jitters. And we got a special week. We've taken a break from our live action American anime adaptation tournament of champions. I'm still working on the name. <laughs> to watch the Jujutsu Kaisen Zero, the, the Jujutsu Kaisen movie that came out. Was it this week or was it last week? This, this week. This week? Yeah, okay, this week. so this is pretty This is pretty new, and this is coming like two days after it came out. So we're going to do probably like just general discussion about it, and then a spoiler talk that we'll talk later on. That way, if you don't want to be spoiled for this, you don't have to be. So, okay. Yeah, we all went to go see this in the middle of the day. It was a good time. I had fun with everybody. It's just nice to see everybody every now and then. Yeah. You guys dressed up for it. Yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah, you guys yeah. were, you Good guys job. were, who were you, who was who? Uh, okay, I was Yuji Dori. Mm -hmm. I was Fujiguru. And I was Nabara. The three people who are not in this movie. Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> the only three people. <laughs> so. We didn't even have a cameo. No. no. I mean, this is the, this is the prequel. Yeah. So yeah. you guys wouldn't be in it. No. <laughs> but, That's true. Um, this was before we were even conceived. <laughs> I think it's like a year before you guys no, showed up. No, like conceived as like character. Oh. Yeah, I was about to say what. <laughs> we were conceived. That's actually a good. Oh, Sorry, I told my, uh... you it would do that. Sorry, my chair almost fell over. I mean, at the very least, Gojo knew Fushiguro. So yeah, I could okay. have been there. Yeah. <laughs> this is actually kind of a good thing to bring up uh, before oh. like the characters were conceived because you told me this that this was the original concept for the show. Yep. Yeah. So, like, uh, we have characters like, uh, well, we have some returning characters. Obviously, Gojo was there. Some mm -hmm. of the some of the staff from uh, Jujutsu Tech, and the three students who came in: Maki, uh, Panda. I always forget the voice kid's name. Ino Maki. Ino Maki. Maki. Ino Maki. Panda. Yeah. So it's like Kansas, Arkansas, and Oklahoma. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So they're there, and they uh, are hanging out with the kid who was supposed to be the original protagonist, Yuda. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he has a, a he, he has a, I want to call it a ghost, but a like, no, it's not. It's a, a curse, curse, but it does feel like he's being haunted by a ghost. Kind um, of. Curse spirit. Yeah, curse spirit. Cursed apparition. Yeah. Oh, whatever. How many other names can we get? <laughs> I, I think we could how, say what How it long is. before we call it a stand? <laughs> I mean, I think True. we can say what it is because, like, they mentioned it in the trailer. It's yeah, no, no, no. It's it's there. We can bring up that. I mean, we can spoil talk about it later. But, like, yeah, it's a uh, cursed spirit that is attached to him that he can actually use to fight mm -hmm. and draw cursed energy from. And it's the spirit, effigy, whatever, of his uh, childhood friend who he they had discussed they were going to get married At ten. when they were eight. Ten, eight, something like that. Yeah, yeah. They were young. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, do you guys actually think that would have lasted? I, know. I know it's anime and they tend to like pick the person they're going to be with for the rest of their lives when they're like four. <laughs> but no. Full so not, uh -huh. Very rarely does the childhood Fred Red win in an anime. Really? Full Metal Alchemist. Well, I said very rarely, <laughs> not often. I think you're right when it comes to any type of actual harem show. Yeah. But yeah. like, so if, if romance is the main thing, it's never going to be the childhood friend. But I think it, happens a lot more when it's not a strictly romance show. Yeah. You know. I have nothing to back this up. <laughs> I gave the one that I can think of. Which one? Full Metal Alchemist. Oh, Full Metal Alchemist. Right, right, right. Well, because usually, like, the childhood friend is also in place as the love interest for a lot of those shows. If yeah. they're not included in a harem. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's... Yeah. There you go. Okay, so... Yeah, Gojo recruits this kid... And he's, I think I could best describe this. This is basically just three episodes kind of strung together a little bit. I pretty much it's... thought of it as like two 45 minute episodes. Like you got the first, yeah, 40, that. you got the first 45 minutes, which is basically Yuta setting his up time at Jujutsu Pai. Yeah. And then the final 45 minutes with the main villain and his shenanigans. Yeah. The ghetto. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's the main villain here. And this is kind of like taking place during the uh, Night of a Hundred Demons mm -hmm. that was mentioned a couple times in the show that uh, Toto and everybody else was involved in. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so we get to see that in a, in a fashion and a couple other things. Um, but this mostly feels like 
it mostly just feels like, hey, I'm the new kid. I'm going to have an episode with each of my classmates, other than Panda. Panda's the only one yeah, who doesn't get his own thing. Panda. Yeah. And then we have the battle at the end. And that's kind of why it just felt like a string of episodes that were put together, as opposed to, like, kind of a cohesive whole. So it's kind of like my one gripe with the movie is, like, this doesn't feel like a movie. That's because that's how the manga went as well. I could imagine yeah. that. Yeah. I, like, I kind of leaned over to you while we were watching. Like, at one point they cut to black after uh, they have a little... They're, I'm going to call it an episode with um, Inumaki. I'm like, I'm expecting the credits to roll now. Because, <laughs> like, it felt like where the end of an episode would have been. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. So. I don't know. I feel like I'm talking a lot. What, are you, what, did you, what were your guys' thoughts? Mm. I mean, you. I would say uh, Yen, Gav, and Chibs are the three main Jujutsu Kaisen fans among us. So what mm. do you guys think? Um, I feel like it was pretty book accurate. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I feel like aside from a couple cameos that I don't remember, they were not them there. being. Yeah, I was like, they I don't think they there. were there. This was before they were conceived as a thing too. Right, yeah. like I think they threw <laughs> them in because they were popular and stuff, which is fine. It didn't bother I'm, me. I feel like the rest was really. Are accurate. we talking yeah. about the people fighting the students, during the yeah. um, like during the students? Yeah. 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 yeah, they we'll, were we'll like go into more of that there. probably during spoiler section of like yeah. everything that happened there. But mm-hmm. yeah, but as far as the movie as a whole, what did you guys? It was really. It was it, good. It was really good, in my opinion. I think it it did well with, like, adapting the manga. It was pretty much the same. Yep. Yeah. Um, I liked how they did the fights. They were all very cool. Yeah. I, I think the end fight, I'm sure we're going to talk about it in spoiler talk. Was yeah. Really, yeah, yeah. really good. Um, I don't know. I don't really have many complaints in terms of it, because it pretty much was, like, the manga, and I enjoyed the manga. So. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I, um... I'd have to agree. I mean, I thought that, like, it followed pretty closely to the uh, Volume Zero manga. Um, And it was, like, we get a lot... um, It's nice to see it, like, animated, like, the different... um, Because it's different when you're seeing, like, emotions on characters' faces in manga Mm -hmm. versus when you're, like, seeing them on the screen. So you can tell, like, there's more emotion, especially with, like, characters like Maki and stuff, who... Yeah, Yeah, Maki gets a lot of good, like, screen time on this one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. I feel like Suguru... I almost don't remember, like, some of the parts with him in the... Being in the manga, but am I wrong? Like, were the what, all you, those what part are you talking? Like about? the part where with the I don't want to spoil it with the woman and her mother. That was there. Oh, yeah, was no, there. the the, the part more. where where the guy like exploded was that there? The guy exploded. That's basically the same scene. Oh, where, the, where they the, twist him yeah, apart. Yeah, it was there. Oh, it yeah, was yeah, there. Yeah. Okay. It was there. It's been a while. This isn't too okay. much of a spoiler. It's just kind of set up for for where he is. He, this uh, ghetto, the the one of the villains who hasn't like really like pushed himself out that far in the um the show yet he's the main villain here and he's like he's essentially set up a protection racket yeah he's a disgraced student from the school he's super powerful and he can manipulate spirits which is a big thing for this because our main I mean, heroes he's, he's basically Voldemort in a kind of, of a way yeah except instead of like doing like killy curse things he he basically is like i can i can pick up evil spirits and curses and stuff and use them myself yeah. yeah. Which is he, why he's so interested in Yuda. Honestly, another what I kind of enjoyed his whole little uh how he's basically got uh those like holy healer kind of people, how he's like running that whole thing and basically Yeah, he's he's running yeah. like people come to him like I'm being affected by a curse and he's using that as a means of like Just one, up the curses. get money. Yes. But two, I'm gonna take these curses. Like he I think he like picks up Curses from, like, poor people mm-hmm. as a means of getting good PR. And then when rich... He, like, sets them on rich people yeah. so they pay him to keep them at bay. And when they can't anymore, he's like, oh, well, I guess I'm done with you. Yeah. yeah. So they, they murder a rich guy. For a second, and I know this is, like, dumb, but I was like, when the guy came out, because he's kind of like a short, squat guy who seemed very angry, I was like, is this, like, Jogo in human form? <laughs> I was like, is he in disguise? But I'm like, no, he wouldn't do that. No, you don't no. need to disguise yourself. Most people can't see these people. Exactly. Yeah. But it was, like, a little thought in the back of my head. That would have been fun. But, yeah, I liked all this stuff with Suguru. I liked getting to see him more and more of his personality that you don't see as much in the... Uh, regular series yeah he's really just like a shadowy big bad yeah you don't see him as much there so i think you see more of his motivations more of who he is in this one and i like that in the manga too it's been over a year since i read it so i didn't remember how much he was there in the Mm -hmm. manga but 
yeah, I do like all the stuff with him in this one. I think yeah. it sets him up really well for the future of the main show. So yeah. I enjoyed that a lot. Mm-hmm. I'd agree. So, anything else we want to talk about before spoilers? Uh, we could just get general things on. I mean, pretty much for me, the movie was pretty much an amalgamation of what I thought of the show as a whole. It was good. I don't love it, but I don't mind it either. Mm-hmm. We're neutral. <laughs> sure. Yeah. That's fair. I mean, you guys know my complaints from the original show. Oh, yeah. yeah, you hated yeah. Toto. <laughs> well, the humor. <laughs> yeah, sometimes the tone. But it's not even so much the tone. It was just the jokes didn't land for me personally. Yeah, but I, yeah, that's, that's fair. Well, comedy is very yeah. subjective, so that's. And there was yeah. even a joke that Panda makes in the middle of a movie that I was just like, "I'm sorry, what?" That came out of nowhere. Maybe, was maybe which the one? thing with Maki? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, this that. I wouldn't even consider that a joke. I think that's just necessarily like a common thing that you'll see in anime. I think it was, yeah, just yeah. teasing yeah, her. It was just, mm. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you mean, though. But, yeah, overall, I still enjoyed it. Obviously, MAPPA, you know, was great with animation, and they are great with, uh, you know, all kinds of other stuff. So, yeah, I, 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 I had fun with the movie. Okay. Should we talk spoilers? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we're going to give you guys a warning now. We're going to start spoilers in three, two, one, spoiler time. Okay, so we should talk about, like, the, the major plot elements yeah. of it. So, mm-hmm. the, yeah, Ghetto is doing this uh, 100 Demon Knight thing. And he's attacking well, Tokyo before and the, Kyoto. Before that, we, we didn't really talk about Yuta as a whole. Like, what happened? I, yeah. I wanted to get there after we, like, kind of explain, like, because Yuta is the whole reason that this is happening. So we might as well explain, like, he's using, he's releasing a whole bunch of, the majority of them, just, like, low-level spirits that he's collected over the years in these spots. And everyone's like, oh, he's declaring war on humanity. No, it's a distraction so he can grab the big monster attached to Yuta. So that's kind of the main plot of this well at least the evil plot and then yuda has to fight him along with his new found friends so yuda let's talk yuda i wasn't in love with him oh he's okay he's all right i think part of the i okay so after seeing bungo stray dogs a couple weeks ago (laughs) me and yin started watching the rest of it I'm not a super big fan of Were Tiger. I think he's like just one of those characters who's constantly down on himself. Oh no, my God, yeah, I he I don't hate him. I just I'm like okay, can you? I please? know you don't like mopey, like sad characters. Yeah, I think his setup is probably a little yeah. more interesting than Dory. I but that's I, what I think too. He is. He's it's more true. interesting, but at the same time, it's like he's very mopey. And again, it's not as bad as Asashi. Asashi gets like. Really mopey. It's the whole because series. of the flashbacks, but anyway, we're not talking about that one. I mean, to but be I'm fair, just saying that's probably why I didn't like it I as mean, much. To be fair, if you're 10 years old and your basically girlfriend yeah. dies yeah. in front of yeah. you, and then I'd she comes be back as a spirit for six years, and I'm yeah. just saying, <laughs> had, I, people. had I not watched Bungo Stray Dogs, I probably would have liked him a little bit better at this point. <laughs> okay, I'm not saying he's bad. He's. I'm just saying I'm a little worn out with that kind of character right I now. will just say that this right boy now. this boy is traumatized. Oh, he absolutely is. And I totally get why he is. Like, I, they had the, the, the scene with, like, the girl dies and then her ghost spirit curse thing just comes up and grabs him by the legs. We'll be together forever. Yeah, like, I mean, okay. anybody you're, would feel you're like... You're fucking traumatized for the rest of your life. I'm going to say, like, I've always really liked Yuda. He's one of my favorite characters. Mm -hmm. And I think his arc, to me, and his setup is a little more interesting than Itadori's. Because I feel like it's a little bit more personal. Because we didn't really get to know Itadori's grandfather or any of that before he died. So, like, all of Itadori's motivations were a little bit distant from him. And Sukuna, yeah. he didn't know. But with Ri- uh, R- Rika, that was her name? Yeah, Rika. With Rika, it's like, that was something that was so personal to him. And it seemed like that was, like, his closest person, you know? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's like, I, I don't even think really we know, felt for him. I don't even think know? we know anything about Yuta's, like, actual family. No, but I felt like I didn't like need that. to. It just yeah. wasn't relevant. Yeah, but no, it also makes Rika feel that Yeah, like, important. it's so relevant to him that it's like, I 
can definitely feel for him. And I think his arc is very good because he goes from being such a scared, like, person to being mm-hmm. a very strong person. You see later on when he comes back, spoiler, he does come back. Honestly, I like um, him by the end yeah. of the movie. He becomes such a badass and such an interesting And he character. spends, at least for the first half of the movie, he goes on an adventure with Maki and uh, Benito Flake's kid. I forget his name. Uh, Inumaki. Inumaki. <laughs> Inumaki. Kansas, but, but yeah. Arkansas. But yeah, he... They, they, and he then goes, Panda. Yeah, yeah, he goes on an adventure with both of them, and he gradually understands the importance of coming together, and like the, and he also discovers the importance of living. Because like, yeah. at the beginning of the movie, the Shadow Council was about ready to kill him, and he was like, "Yeah, I'm okay with this." And then Gojo's like, "Well, I like, let's, tried let's to start, kill himself. Let's start off with where this movie starts us." Where he is basically being cornered in a classroom by a group of bullies who all just want to beat him up. And Rika basically comes out of nowhere. It's basically like, no one will hurt you. And then she basically tears them apart and shoves them in a locker. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So let's just say that his, probably his mindset's kind of in a bad place at that yeah, we point. We started at a 10 and that's basically been his whole life. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, in the manga, I think they did a better job like... Of him getting like character development, like I it it's kind of weird because you would think that that's harder to show in manga, mm-hmm. but like I think he had I think he had a lot more like stronger lines in the manga, like during the final fight. You mean dialogue? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So I think that might just even be like translation potentially, <laughs> like how they translated it. That's true. Like versus like manga versus um what it was in like subtitles. Yeah. yeah, we watched the sub, so yeah. So not that it I, I don't think it really matters. I think his other. voice actor was really good though. Yeah. Like yeah. I think it portrayed the character really well. It's pretty much what I would have imagined for him. Yeah. Mm. I will say he gets to the point of being like not so down on himself by the end of the movie, which I'm a fan of and I Definitely like him better than Wear Tiger at this point. Um, I mean, he has development too. I know you'll argue with me about that, but he does. I know but... he does. But <laughs> like, so he gets you know, a I'm lot. Not gonna get on we're not going to debate We're not going to do that. Bungo Stray Dogs won, though. Hilarious. <laughs> love it. That's the Akagawa that I was looking for. Um, but this. Uh, so, what about the trio, uh, Kansas, Arkansas, and Oklahoma? Which is what I'm going to refer to them now as. I'll be completely honest. I wasn't a big fan of Maki for most of the movie. I thought she was kind of bitchy throughout most of the movie. She has her reasons, but like, it, yeah. it didn't seem like she was the same character that we saw in the original series. I mean, she was kind of bitchy. She was a little bitchy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when she first showed up. She's a little more... I, I kind of get what you're saying. She's a little bit more personable in the series, though. Right? But I think that's because it's <laughs> after this when she's opened up a little bit. Like, okay. she's opened up to, like, Nobara and everybody well, else. All, I, 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 I guess, guess I could say it also didn't help, too, that we got introduced to her basically around the same time we got introduced to her sister, and she's the bigger... Yeah, she's the bigger yeah, asshole. That's yeah, true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. The said. comparison, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, by the end, I was rooting for her a little bit. Yeah. Especially when she... Like, there's a... I'll say this. This is definitely a good movie if you've never seen Jujutsu Kaisen, the original show. Mm-hmm. You could go into it completely blind, and they explain a lot of stuff about the mm-hmm. how yeah. the universe works. The only like problem that you might end up having is like when you get to the Night of a Hundred Demons, and it's just Cameo <laughs> City. Yeah. At that point, you're like, yeah. okay, why are we focusing on any of this? I don't know who any of these people are. Yeah, that's Which, fair. That's like the one thing that wasn't in the manga. Yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. That was absolutely yeah. fancy. Because like watching, I was like. You could Why? cut this and it wouldn't make a difference. Yeah, they had the yeah, Kyoto kids, they had Nanami, they had a bunch of other I people. didn't like love that. Great to see them. It's always cool to see c- cool people do cool things, but it's, it, it's, this is not the point. The it whole point up, of that thing was a distraction for the real plot. It ate up screen time. Yeah. A little bit. I mean, to be fair, Nanami's my favorite character, so I was happy to see him. It was nice I was to happy, see him. I was happy to see Toto. I know you hate Toto. I love Toto. <laughs> I like Toto. <laughs> That is cool. I hated him in his introduction episode. Uh, this, okay. uh, this introduction episode was the, what made me drop the show originally I, for like a month. It, I mean, we've talked about this. It, that introduction reminds me of Rock Lee. You immediately get some points from me. I think it's the association. Yeah, I, like it. associations can like help or hinder me. It can me. make or break it for you. Yeah. But... I really liked Inumaki in this one, yeah. I'm gonna say. He's also one of my favorite characters. I think it's because he gets 
Hey, did he get anything in the series? Oh, yeah. He got yeah. a little but like, bit. But not to this extent. I yeah. feel like this showed a lot more of who he is. And we got, I mean, his scenes were really cool, like, when they went on oh, yeah. mission together. Yeah, because they, they even develop his character a little bit more, because they're like, oh, yeah, like, he's basically, like, had no control over his powers because his yeah. power is, like, cursed speech. So, like, he says words and he literally did curses ever, people. Did they ever show him using, like, a throat? clearing spray yeah. or like in the show they do yeah uh, i'm sure I, he's like he's the kind of person who would definitely carry around lozenges yeah. or something because like um, is it is his speech like so powerful that like that makes your throat burn yeah. out of yes. like one use yes. basically i mean if if i'm interpreting this correct he's flowing cursed energy through his vocal cords mm -hmm. and then releasing it with a power word yeah i would imagine that would like be the same as like screaming like 10 times louder than the human body could yeah um, yeah. The thing is, is, like, they do develop him more as a character, like, because Yuta doesn't have really a lot of control over his powers when he first joins, uh, Jujutsu High. So, I'd imagine, yeah. Yeah, so he, like, really relates to him in, like, a lot of ways, so he's, like, very worried about him mm -hmm. and, like, him adjusting and, like, getting control over everything, so... We, we get a bit of development here, and this is more just coming from Panda giving us yeah. exposition yeah. on Inumaki himself. But it helps well, I mean, a lot. It's, it's interesting, because, yeah. like, he's, Inumaki's also, like, the nearly mute character, mm -hmm. so it's, like, it's difficult to connect with him. Yeah. Even for the characters in World who don't already know him. Yeah. And it's kind of good to see that bond being formed. Yeah. Like, like, sort of, like, I'm starting to understand you, Benita Flix. Is that <laughs> I was going to say, do they, do they eventually explain how the other characters can understand him, like, how he speaks? So, I started understanding him a little bit. So, the thing is, is, uh, the author for the manga actually sort of, like, made a very small glossary to say, here's what these words mean for when he is talking. And because, like, yeah. he uses the same words. Some words are affirmative. Some words are, Salmon like, means good or yes, I'm yes. assuming. Yes. Uh -huh. So that, one's, that one comes up a lot. And you can kind of get it from context a little yeah. bit. Yeah, and his so, tone and everything. It's almost like yeah. certain characters, like uh, Chewbacca or, like, um, Schnitzel from Chowder. It's yeah. like certain characters. You can always tell what kind of tone they're going with. Yeah. You might just not be able to, We, as the audience, just can't understand what they're saying. Like, so. there's certain characters that can speak their language, at least for Chewbacca, but, like... Or at least understand it. Yeah. yeah. I think, yeah, I think it's definitely... I mean, there's a limited number. I don't, I don't know enough about rice balls. So I don't know what his, the extent of his vocabulary could be. But, like, yeah, if you had, like, a key of, like, 25 to 30 words, he could communicate pretty easily, I think. My question is, why doesn't he use sign language? Um, it feels like such an easier go-to. It is, but that requires people knowing how to speak it. I get that, but at the same... Like, I feel like we watched a movie about sign language. Silent voice? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, like, yeah, it's, like, if you're working with people constantly, I don't... I'm not gonna pretend like I understand sign language, but I feel like a number of the of the the way expressions like it does kind of involve like either pointing or mm -hmm. miming the thing. So sometimes. there's certain like, times where they have, you have to have translators if they don't speak sign language. That yeah, and also it, that's harder to translate through manga. Think about it that way. I feel like if you just put like a little title but thing through the different panels. Uh, I keep forgetting it was a manga. <laughs> I see what Still you're saying. images. I see what you're saying. It could work a lot easier as an anime, but it starts off as a manga. Mm. Okay. So I feel like having like words that you can show in bubbles, even when you don't make sense if you're provided like a glossary for that, that is a lot easier to communicate to an audience versus showing them someone doing sign language but you're missing a bunch of steps. You're going to have to have other characters basically explain things in other bubbles. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, it's just a lot more work. Think of it that way. I guess so, but I also feel like you could, like, like just do one shot of him where you kind of have, like, the kind of fade. Like, there's, like, a thing you can kind of do to show movement of hands where they have, yeah, like, no, four or five hands and it's, like, different stuff. You can. And you could just have it at the bottom, like... And it doesn't have to be, like, overly complicated. It could just be, like, basic, like... Who is that? Or... But even then... Like, I just feel like he could express himself more just dis distinctly. You could, but even at the same time, like, their sign language isn't going to be our sign language. True. Oh, that would translate difficult. Yeah. Damn. I don't know. I, I mean, feel like be... what they did worked fine. Yeah. Bonita flakes. <laughs> and I think, like, they kind of <laughs> use it as a character court kind of thing. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. 
it's it's certainly like makes him more memorable. Yeah, I think that was part of it. Like, I know what you're saying is more logical, but yeah, because like yeah, I'm Japanese sign language. It would make it hard. Even then, the mangaka would then also have to learn sign language. Yeah, in order to properly translate it. I mean, I think if you just knew a couple small ones. You need to know grammar and everything. Because sign language, com- grammar completely different from actual speaking grammar. Yeah. Yeah, it seems like it would get complicated. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, I know he doesn't talk much, but still. <clears throat> That's why I was thinking, like, you could just have a couple, like, basic signs to work with. Mm-hmm. At least to start. And then, like, there's other people he could, like, just, like, be throwing hands with all day. But... Yeah, no. Okay. I think I got it. So what else? Panda didn't really get anything, so we don't have to worry. Oh, well, Panda, do you want to talk about the boobs thing? (laughs) I mean, it's kind of one of those things where, like, there's some humor in the Jujutsu Kaisen show, especially with, like, the Jujutsu Scroll stuff. I love the Jujutsu Scrolls at the end of every episode. Mm, I think they're they're funny, but, like, (laughs) some of the humor in the actual episodes just, like, confuse me because like there's a point where yuda is learning how to use a sword to imbue his girlfriend's cursed energy into it and she's he's training with maki and then because she's the weapon person yeah yeah, and then panda is like hmm he's also learning to use a weapon like maki maki yuda come here quickly you need to learn something what do you like big boobs or small boobs literally that's the transition big i guess (laughs) maki you have a chance (laughs) I kind of took that, like... He I was think, shipping them. Yeah. Yes, but I think part of it is, like, at least... Because you guys were saying, like, yeah, Maki's a bit of a bitch in this one. I don't think Maki connects to people very easily. No. They're a very, like, self-actualized, I'm an independent person who don't need nobody kind of personality. And, like, okay, you're connecting... You're actually connecting with someone on something you're, you're interested in. Panda might have seen that as, like... Oh my god, they might actually make a friend. Maybe more well, than like, a friend. Where hey, I think, there's a yeah. pop- Also, I think he's like the big brother of the group, and yeah. he would absolutely make yeah. fun of your younger sibling well, if they had like a. Well, like at the end of the movie, and that's where I came around to her, but like they go more into her backstory. It's like she was basically, she doesn't have cursed energy. She has yeah. to yeah. use her glasses and weapons, and like she was the basically the shame of her clan and mm-hmm. and then you just like i want to be like you and that was like probably like the first time she ever felt heard that in her life so yeah it was like that's absolutely that. <laughs> so well because yeah, she's just she is just so strong yeah. mostly on her own yeah she has the assistance of like glasses and weapons that can allow her to fight but she doesn't is... she have like an ability that she's just like yeah. Superhuman physically. She just uh-huh. can't actually see curses. Yeah. She's kind of Captain thing. America. A little bit. <laughs> that is a thing. Oh, no. She's probably just all natural. Like, forget Captain America was... No, no. Sterile. She's no, she... all natural, yes. But she has... She's just naturally more powerful. Like, stronger, flexible, mm-hmm. agility, all that stuff. She's higher level there than is, every other human. There is an actual name for it. And there's, like, one other character that, like, has this in canon. Yeah, I think the overall explanation was you can't use or see cursed energy, but as a result of that, you are more physically capable than every other person. Mm-hmm. So, as long as you can see something and use something, you're immediately a better fighter than everybody else. Yeah. I would love to see Maki fight Toto. Oh. That would be amazing. <laughs> it's basically her reflexes versus clap, disappear. Yeah. Clap, disappear. Clap, yeah. disappear. <laughs> but, like, also, as soon as they actually engage, like, who are the most physically powerful of all the people at that school? The mm-hmm. two of them. I want to see the world blow up when, they're, when their fists clash. I mean, I Maybe think, I would, I would say Toto's probably more physically stronger than her just because of how big his fucking muscles are, but... I don't think that matters. I think yeah. she just, like, got that magic strength, man. She does. Well, and also there's... Panda, who's a little bioengineered panda. That's a panda. whole other thing. <laughs> He's a panda gorilla. What's the third one? We don't know. Because we haven't seen the sister yet. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. But, but like when it, whenever he fights um Ghetto at the end of the movie, like it like he pinned him down for a good second and it was yeah. like that's just pure roid strength. That there. is pure gorilla strength. <laughs> but yeah, no, what were you saying with Maki and the uh thing at the end? Because I think we went kinda went into her power backstory a little bit well yeah like she, her she comes from like one of the three main jiu-jitsu sorcerer clans and 
she wasn't born with the ability, so basically she was shunned and outcasted her entire life, and yeah, so you're just like, well, it doesn't matter to me. I want to be like you, and that was like a good moment for her because <laughs> she she even got a little flustered. It's like, oh no, <laughs> am I feeling? Do I have the feels now? It's good, but it's also like I ship you with Nobra, and now I gotta have this possible ship too. Oh, you that's not have good. More than one ship. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I Does think a lot of people on the internet would disagree with you. I think you can absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I always, ship her with both. There's yeah. always the OT three yeah. option. Does Nobra even know you? <laughs> no. no. Not yet. <laughs> She's a, she Beautiful does not. Walks up. This is my girlfriend, Maki, and Maki's girlfriend, Nova. <laughs> yeah, I love that meme. <laughs> yeah. If that ever happens in canon. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, is there uh, even uh, any romance that's hinted at all? Gojo um, <laughs> flirts with everybody. Or maybe that's just Does he? That. Does he really? I think he's a slut. He's just very I mean, charming. I think the thing with Gojo is, is that, like, I think he has, like, had other people, but I don't think he ever keeps one person. His person like, was ghetto. I think, <laughs> yeah. I think that I think he ghetto said that. was, this was like, this like, is my best friend the ever. Only person. I'm, and I'm quoting that from, like, an interview that was had with the author, mm-hmm. where it was, like, Gojo's, like, yeah, he's very flirtatious, but he, and, like, he's dated multiple people, but he's never, like, stuck with one person for very long. Yeah, like, I can't imagine no. him doing so. So, yeah. me calling him Hojo might be correct? Um. Mm-hmm. Please don't call him that, because now all I think about is the doctor from Final Fantasy VII. I don't want to never played Final that, Fantasy man. VII, so that's not a problem for me. Uh, is, the Hojo is a creep. <laughs> Hojo is a creep. I don't know, part of it is also, like, we watched the dubbed, and he's got Dazai's voice, and Dazai's he kind of a He does have ho. that, Dazai's yeah. a hoe. You're right. So. No. <laughs> they are like. They're the same man, I'm telling you. It's like, Gojo is like Dazai if he took over Kakashi's body. Oh. Right. Okay. <laughs> I mean, actually fair. Yeah. <laughs> actually fair. Yeah. But, um. We uh, got some of the stuff with him and Suguru in their background in yeah. this one. Yeah. I'm sure we'll get more in the next season or a movie. I don't know how they're yeah. going to do it yet. The Star Child arc would be either like a six episode like arc or it could just work as a movie. I think yeah, six I think it could, could be a movie. Yeah. I mean, they already confirmed a season two is in development, so whether or not that's part of it, I would imagine that probably would be. I mean, what's the I next mean, arc after Shibuya? Where we, and Shibuya? That's, so well, it's long. the Star Child one, then Shibuya. Yeah. yeah. Star Child comes after what? Well, uh, the painting thing. The painting thing. And then it's Hold Shibuya. Hold on, did we see the painting thing already? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. That was with the three brothers. Right. Okay. And then we get, yeah, we get Gojo's past, and then we get Shibuya, which is a really long arc. I don't even know if yeah. one season will cover it. Yeah. That Maybe they'll just include Gojo's backstory as part of the season two and just... Yeah, I'm not they sure might. if they'll do a movie or include it as part of season two. I, I think it know. would make more sense as a movie, though. Yeah, because yeah, it's kind of separate. It once again doesn't really have it the is main pretty character. Pretty short. Yeah. Mm. But that yeah, I mean, I feel that feels like kind of what they're doing here because this isn't entirely yeah. it's canon, but it's like <clears throat> whatever it happened before the series kind of thing. You can watch it with watch the series without watching this. Yeah. Well, not have any later issues. on you might be a little confused, but yeah. not totally. They'll bring up They'll whatever they need to it, bring yeah. up again. I mean, the series gets confusing during the Shibuya arc. Yeah. Mm-hmm. With a lot of stuff that they introduce. So many characters. So many characters, so many plot points, so many twists that they do with it. Like, Goodness. Like a lot of other things that they did with Suguru was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> It was hella confusing. Yeah, you're right. And also just, it was a bit of a what the fuck. <laughs> mm-hmm. Can't you know, what, you I know, know exactly what, talking what I'm talking about. about. I do. And if you know and what, what they're talking that. about in the comments, don't comment. I don't want to <laughs> fucking know yet. <laughs> Try not to say. So, uh, I know, yeah, we're in the spoiler section. Don't spoil that much. <laughs> <laughs> I won't. That's why I'm being vague. <laughs> yeah. Uh, should we talk about the fight? Yeah! The fight at the end? Yeah! With, um, cool. You guys... Okay, so yeah, Ghetto goes to Jujutsu Tech while the Night of 100 Demons is going on because it's, it's again, like we said before, it's all a distraction for him getting a hold of Rika. 
because mm -hmm. it's pro it's probably the most powerful cursed apparition he's ever seen. And he's like, if I can get, get my hands on this thing, oh my god, so many things that I could do. Yep. And yeah, so it's it's pretty much just Yuta and Maki are at the school because Panda and everyone else and is all out fighting the the parade cavalcade of monstrosities. And of course, Gojo is like, wait a minute. Why is the egotistical psychopath who made this whole thing happen, why is he not here? Oh, he's up to some shit. Panda, uh, Inumaki, go back and help them. They're, they're probably dead by now. And yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, we get some fighting. We don't get to see Maki's fight. No. They show um, up and she's already down. Yeah. Uh, Panda and Inumaki both go at it with uh, Ghetto. Like, uh, Panda put up a pretty good fight, and then at the last second, uh, Inumaki just, like, crushes him into a crater. If he was a normal person, he'd be dead. 100%, <laughs> yeah. He would have been dead already with Maki. Mm, yeah. I mean, that's not even a question. But yeah, so, all that's left is Yuta and Rika. And we're kind of getting more of Rika's apparition character a little bit mm -hmm. at this point. Because... I mean, we knew that she was possessive and everything, but she's kind of jealous of Maki. She's yeah. a bit of a yandere, you know, a little. Yeah, when you turn, <laughs> your, you turn into, like, a, a monstrous grudge ghost with teeth, it's like... Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. We didn't mention when he went on the mission with Maki and it came out for the first time and she yeah. just tore apart a kaiju. Yep, 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 yep. That, that was the thing that she did. Yep. Anyway, he's, uh... We get a fight with Ghetto and Yuda and Rika, and uh, he's finally coming to his... Like, how long has he been at that school? For at least... Six months? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Say at least. Yeah, he's basically on Gojo's level now. Yeah. It's he's a, a special grade. It's a little bit of a jump. Yeah. But... But, I mean, she's so powerful. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's and they established that, that, so I'm her. not surprised. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, is it her power, though? It is his, actually. Yeah. He we, cursed, find out, we find out that he cursed her. Yeah, because yeah. his ancient bloodline is the same as Gojo's. So, you know, any real power in this world is entirely hereditary. You have to win the genetic lottery to be yeah, super Don't forget, they, yeah. at the end of the movie, he's like, you're somewhat related to me. That's what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> of course, we have we God have Gojo God. and God Yuta <laughs> and God Ghetto and whoever the fourth special grade person is. Whatever. And, yeah, like, okay... So, no one else gets to be super, super, super. You have to be born with it. Maybe, well, I don't think Ghetto is in the same Maybelline. bloodline. <laughs> no, but they, I think they said Yuda and Gojo are both descended from the same guy who was one of the three yeah, great and practitioners. Then Ghetto is the other. I yeah, Ghetto is definitely. And then whoever the mystery fourth person is, is probably the third you might thing. Be right. Like, yeah. it feels like one of those things where it's like. And I feel like you see this in a lot of other media, especially media that this author seemed to have really loved when he was younger. Are you talking about like, Naruto? Yes, I'm talking about Naruto. <laughs> you have a team of three that trains another team of three that are all basically the same tropes over and over down the line and passing down your powers as they get more and more powerful. But yeah, so. I think it's the first time we've had two from one practitioner, though. That's a little different. No. I guess that's where he deviates. We get a little bit more of, like, Ghetto and Gojo's backstory. Hello, yeah. Like, we get to see them, them being friends. I want to know who their third was. Oh, that's Shoko. That's, that's Dr. Yuri. Really? Yeah, that's yeah. her. Oh. They, they were she all the, friends. Is she the other? The fourth? I don't We think, don't know? I don't think so. I don't so, think so. But at the same time, okay. she is one of the few people who can do uh, the reverse curse thing. Well, other than this new guy who can do it after six months. Yeah. <laughs> Are you mad about it? Who can also summon up his friend's powers, too? I yeah, don't know. you know. That was a little much. I have the power of everything. Yeah. <laughs> he has the power of love. Yeah. Oh, yes. It he's really the, is the power of love. It's like Persona. He's the... Um, it's like Huey Lewis. He's the wild card. I hear they got the power of God and anime on my side. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he does. Yeah. He absolutely does. Yeah. He has multiple Personas. <laughs> okay so yeah he he's, he's able to do all those yeah, things yeah. I mean you're related to Gojo you're going <laughs> to be um, yeah and then uh, he Ghetto tries to fight him with all of his most powerful spirits and all of his spirits combined into one thing I like how he was called Uzumaki yeah. like mm, 
I know this isn't the same thing, but I'm getting Jinji Ito vibes. Thank you for that. Yeah. yeah. Just a giant spiral of ghosts and, mm-hmm. and pain. Yep. Mm-hmm. I feel like, did Jinji Ito ever just do that? Like a ghost maelstrom? No. I don't think so. I mean, he yeah, had... he should get on it. I don't know. Uzumaki, but that's not the same. <laughs> no, but it's like, tra- like yeah. Okay. And I, the my one disappointment with that is yeah. that we didn't get to see his other ghost fight. Because that was a famous ghost. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. To, to Mamo May. Yeah. It's a, yeah, like a spirit. It's yeah. an incarnate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like, if I'm remembering the mythology, that's like the Kitsune spirit mm-hmm. who, like, brought a lot of, like, powerful men to ruin or whatever, or something like that. E. Yeah. That would have been cool to see fight your monster girlfriend. But, no, power of love, super beam that kills everybody. I thought that was a nice message. <laughs> it is a nice message, but... I think it was pretty cool. Yeah. It was cool, specific. but I still wanted to see what the thing could do. I know, Like, but... this, is a, this is a show where, like, every spirit is, like, a different yeah. thing and does different stuff and has a, has a different design. And I'm like, okay, you are literally taking a spirit that, like, people probably know, and we, we don't get to see it fight. I'm just, it was a little yeah. bit of a disappointment there. You know what? Just thought just occurred to me. Go for it. I wonder if the manga first got started with the author essentially, like, taking all of his weird doodles from his notebook and, like, just wanting to turn it into a manga. Why not? Probably. Like, that, sounds, that sounds like a great premise. Honestly, I just looked at, like, a lot of, like, the stuff that, like, he's drawn for, like, all of the curses, and I'm just like, some of this just looks like some really basic funny doodles. Yeah. Like, some of it's just, like, actual, like, really detailed, like, monster, like, design creation. And I'm just, like, I could just easily see this being in the some, some Teenage Kids sketchbook. Absolutely. He's got a lot of really great creative energy when it comes to, like, a lot like of the, the designs. Like, the curses look really interesting. Yeah. yeah. And you can tell they have, like, some sort of thing, like, each like one. Like, where they talk, basis. like, about something. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, mom, brother got it before me. Why yeah. can't I have it? It's like, yeah, all the have little a, ones and the bigger ones. Of some kind. Yeah. I mean, that because that's kind of what they are. They're like yeah. the negative energy from their, their emotions yeah. that are essentially turned into like a, I hazard to say living being, but living creature. Right. Like out of a memory or a feeling or a, 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 tr- a moment. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's cool. And it then was. all of his characters are all from Naruto. <laughs> <laughs> True. Yeah. But still, they're done well, though. Yeah. But yeah. Um, it was interesting. I think Suguro called um, Rika the queen of curses. Yeah. And then the, Sukun is the king of curses. I wonder if they'll have to throw down. Oh, I would I... see that fight. <laughs> would they? Rika's gone. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Sorry. What did I tell you about spoilers? <laughs> I messed up. <laughs> so, I messed up. Yeah, I will ask this about like this title. Is this a real title or is this something that he's throwing out there because he's he sees this as the most powerful one he's seen? She is super fucking powerful. I, I could think tell she's that. up there with Sukuna. Yeah. But that was kind of my question. Like we we know Sukuna as the king of curses because I feel like he's been around for forever. So the, and like he just kind of got that title over time. The I thing think. with her and it's based on their grade yeah they are both special grade okay and as far as like their powers for like say like curses go it's quite a bit beyond anything that i think that like could have been seen like sukuna yes he he was powerful back in his day when yeah. he was still alive. Mm-hmm. Right. So that is a thing and no one will deny that. Well, yeah. But like, I think that's how he gets the title King of Curses. He was devastating for years. And I'm assuming no one else ever got powerful enough to claim the title. But, you know, Suguru's seen all these curses. He and has. he thinks Rika is the strongest. Okay. So yeah. I think he's probably right. All you right. Know? Like, so especially I- for how young of a spirit she is. Yeah. Like, like think imagine of, if she's cooked for like hundreds of years. <laughs> she would be more powerful. How many fingers does she him. have? Because that could really determine. Fingers. Yeah, no. Um, oh. Yeah. Although, I think that's more Yuta then. Yeah, he's, he's allowed he's to stew well, yeah, for a long we should time. Bring up, 
we should bring that up because Rika's not actually the curse nope. in all of this. She was cursed. And it's because Yuta didn't want her to die. Yeah, Yuta didn't couldn't accept her death, and he inadvertently filled her up with so much curse energy that she became the monster that she was. Yeah, because basically Gojo throughout this entire movie was telling information to him at the last possible second. Well, that's when, just Gojo. Yeah. <laughs> when it was least convenient to him. We're talking about the guy who waited to tell all of the people like that their friend was still alive, like, <laughs> weeks right. later <laughs> until, like, right before we're about to do a big event thing. Yeah. To be fair, I think at that point, everyone's just used to it, so no one reacts to his surprise. Yeah, anymore. they were like, oh. Yeah, except for Nobara and Fushiguro, who are just like, you're dead to us, even though you were back. Like, One thing I was kind pissed. of disappointed with this movie, with the final fight, was, like, there's, like, this foreign guy that's part of, the guy, a ghetto squad, it was like, a, yeah. like a, a magic rope. And they show Gojo using his eyes, but then like it cuts away, and then it shows, like, oh, they escaped. I kind of wanted them to use his powers on screen. It would have been nice to see with, you know, movie quality animation. The, uh, his black hole shit? Yeah. 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 Because you have the budget for a theatrical movie, yeah. and you were able to pull that off with TV animation budget, so... I know it probably wouldn't have fit the tone of the movie or, like, what they were going for, but just... I don't think he unleashes his full power. And also, he he's did. in the middle of a city. Yeah, you don't want to open a he black hole have, in a yeah, city. Devastated a few he literally people. knocked a monster into a building that caused it to collapse. Yes, but he Did it collapse didn't... or did it just break all the windows? It broke all the windows. That's replaceable. But also, another it's thing... fucking expensive. But it's when he did hollow purple... Yep. And how <laughs> big of a crater that thing made... Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I don't think him doing that in the middle of the city would be a good idea. No, no, no. But, yeah, I... We, we should talk a little bit about Gojo. I know this is, like, something you guys know about. Okay. Or something. Sorry. That there's something going on. <laughs> there's a, there's a post credit scene yeah. where we're definitely in spoiler territory here. Yep. Yuta's down in Africa. Kenya. Kenya. And he's with Rope Dude. Yep. And then Gojo walks up. Uh-huh. So Gojo let Rope Dude not only live, but escape, and is in contact with him, who was working with Ghetto. I don't think Gojo killed Ghetto. No. Or, yeah. Mm. I, yeah. I, well. No, Ghetto's in the next series. So he's either a cursed spirit, come back from the dead, or Gojo let him live, because Gojo's really evil, or he's trying to undermine the thing. We already know he's trying to oh. undermine the, 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 the. The people who run... It's hard. You, you, just let me riff. Don't say anything. It's hard. I know you, anything you guys say is going to be spoilers and ruin everything, so I'm just going to theorize with stuff right now. All right. Yeah. Where are you in the series right now? Are you in, with me on this where it's just no. like you're just anime level, or are you with them? No. I was going to say, you're somewhere in the show. Right. You are. You okay. I, I haven't started Shibuya okay. yet. Oh, okay. 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 You can be Maybe with me for theorizing yeah. if you I'm... want. You two shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Character design, and that's all I'm going to say. Character design. Okay, so people are related to each other. Gotcha. No. <laughs> I mean... Shut up now. The only yeah, thing I can up, think of up. is his head. Yeah, his, 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 head. Head. <laughs> his head. I, here's, I don't know whether I would have noticed this or not. <laughs> this is something you guys can actually answer, because I might yes. just be not remembering uh-huh. it specifically. <laughs> He's missing an arm at the end of this movie. Correct. Does he have the arm in... Yes. Yeah. The yeah. Seer? Okay. I know he has one, just not the other. Does he have both? Yes. Yes. He has okay. both. All right. So he went through some serious healing. He has healing. a stitch on his head. Yeah, I know. He I know has. the stitch on his head, and this is, like, definitely where he got it from, I'm assuming. That, or it's some secret brain surgery that's part of a plot point that will be said, like, three arcs from now, and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> That, <laughs> or here's, the, here's my newest theory. He's not actually ghetto. So here's what Gojo did. He did brain surgery on himself, split his mind in half, and then using the power of his own space time, <laughs> regenerated both sides so now he is in both Ghetto's head and his own. And he will use Ghetto's body, who is actually Gojo, part Gojo, to then take over the Jujitsu High Council. <laughs> so he's the ultimate villain? He is the ultimate villain. He's going to take over hey, everyone's hey, brains, and everyone's going to have the scar fan, on their Fan pick AU writers. Write that down! Write that down! <laughs> He's a genius! <laughs> I'm just, like, trying to come up with the most outlandish shit. That, or I can just work with what I already know this guy takes from, Naruto. Let's see. What could it be? So we've already kind of covered oh that, that Ghetto is, is more like... Okay, so 
<laughs> get up. We know that uh, Gojo, for the most part, is based on Kakashi. Yes. We know that he has a friend who left. But that was under different circumstances, but they were enemies afterwards when he came back. Uh huh. Hmm. That guy teamed up with an even more powerful person. Uh huh. To then come back to destroy the school. Uh huh. Or village in Naruto's case. Yes. So, I know that he already formed the Akatsuki in Demon Land. Yes. Mm-hmm. There's a possibility that Ghetto is being manipulated by someone else. Who is themselves being manipulated by someone else. Who is then being themselves being manipulated by someone else. Who is then being manipulated by the Princess of the Moon who created all of Ninjutsu. <laughs> We're not going there, hopefully. Hopefully people know when to stop copying certain parts of Naruto. I don't like Chibs' reactions to all of this. <laughs> I don't want to say how I, much is right or thing. wrong. Yeah, no, I can't. Yeah. It, it's... Here's the good thing. I can't tell what you're thinking. I can't tell if you're being like, I don't want to react to how ridiculous he's talking, <laughs> or it's, he's so close. Yeah. <laughs> Either way, I can't tell. So I'm just theorizing here. I'm Hi thinking, there. I'm going yeah. to some degrees of stuff with like the Akatsuki and everything else. I'm like, okay, so this guy is, uh, we'll call him some sort of amalgamation of Obito, Itachi, and maybe Orochimaru, depending on how you want to look at it. Okay, who's paying in this scenario? Who's Madara? Who is whoever is like above? Who eventually you get to Princess Kaguya with the demon horns and the starring gun in the middle of her face? I don't know, but I think never mind. Or is it the ancient three practitioners who are still alive somehow that have that have been manipulating their children for so long? Because Yuji and uh, Megami are the reincarnations of the Cain and Abel of the ninja world. That could, you know, I'm getting too far into Naruto again. But then again, so did this guy. So you know. I know what I'm doing when I get home tonight. Are you reading it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not. I gotta wait for anime shit. Let's see, I, uh... I don't got time for this. I gotta edit shit. I, uh... Because <laughs> I, I stopped, like, right, at, like, before the Shibuya art. Uh, so I was... so close. Yeah, I could have... I could have continued, but I was like, nah. So. <laughs> having not known... <laughs> You mean, Where my theories I mean, are going. I'll, I'm anime only like you, so yeah, yeah. I'll wait and see what happens when season two comes out. You know what? At some point, it's going to get spoiled for us. Like, here's the thing. The thing is, I think after season two, we're going to really start seeing spoiler posts everywhere for later yeah. stuff in the manga. I feel like right now we're in the perfect sweet spot of, like, we know what we know from the anime, but not enough of it has been spoiled if you keep off, like, Reddit or shit like that. Or Tumblr. Yeah, I'm not on Tumblr. I mean, I have a Tumblr account, but it's like, I don't fucking use it. I don't I mean, you can only get really spoiled for it if you go in the tags. I don't go looking. I don't don't go looking for anything because I'm like, I I don't want to be, like, spoiled on stuff. I mean, clearly I've been spoiled on some things. I'm sorry. Thanks, I'm you know, forgot. it's just a thing. Here's the thing. <laughs> nothing ever really dies. Nothing ever really matters. I so mean, it's, yeah. Nothing uh, ever really dies like Suger. Yeah. <laughs> he's not dead. Or maybe he is. And Gojo's brain is inside of him. Who can say for sure? <laughs> maybe. Maybe. I mean, I'm just, you know, that scar on his head. Yeah, it's his like brain Dio. was switched out for someone. He's like Dio. Exactly. He's Dio. <laughs> He's Dio and Stardust Crusaders. And what is he doing? Chasing a guy with a stand. Yeah, you're right. There you go. Shit. We figured it out. We finally came back to JoJo, as it always all does. It's full yeah. circle. <laughs> yep, yep. So when are they going to fight the goddess of the moon? And then use a bunch of naked dudes to trick her. That's my question. Yeah. Hey, when we when we did a, a, a for those that may not remember our shonen uh, and uh, shonen tournament, he shonen showdown, shonen showdown, give it the branding it deserves. We <laughs> Al famously did a full on PowerPoint presentation on the similarities. You know what? Hold up. Let's talk about that. How accurate was I for my predictions from that? Uh. I didn't make too many predictions. Wait, what predictions did so you make? I think Are the only Subaru? real prediction was, was that Subaru was connected to someone and betrayed somebody. Okay. And I think my joke was that it was going to be Megami because Megami is very much the Sasuke character. Yeah, at it's least not with Megami, the, in the it's tree. Not Megami. Okay. Yeah. So it, we're I going with you know we're going with it a different Uchiha. Yeah. yeah. So okay. Yeah. yeah. So everything else was mostly aesthetic though. So whatever. Thing. I think I'm done ranting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If anyone else needs to it'll, say it'll any final comes around to that. thoughts. 
<laughs> Any final thoughts? Any other? Music was good. Animation was bomb. It's Mappa. They know yeah, what they're yeah. doing at this point. Yeah. yeah. I feel I feel like Mappa employees are just like barely able to survive because they're doing so much shit at once. I feel yeah. bad for them. Dude, they're doing, so they're doing Jujutsu Kaisen in the final season of Attack on Titan. They're going to do Chainsaw Man later this year. So they get overtime. Yeah. Didn't man. they pick up yeah. Hell's Paradise too? I don't. They might which have. I'm psyched about. They might have. I mean, we're still waiting on that Yuri on Ice movie. It's been five years. One day. One day. <laughs> well, whenever that happens, we'll, we'll. I'm sure we'll take a look at whatever you guys are talking about. I haven't read a whole lot of manga in a while. So. Yeah. Hell's you Paradise. You should read Jujutsu Kaisen. Yeah, Hell's uh, Paradise is so good. Everybody maybe, should read that manga as well. Maybe I should like before I get spoiled list. on everything if else. I did, <laughs> if I didn't like Chainsaw Man, would I like Hell's Paradise? I you might. It's not really like Chainsaw Man. Okay. It's just like for some shonen manga, it's really like real hit, hit or miss for me. Yeah. Like Jujutsu Kaisen just like happened to hit it mm-hmm. like quite right. I um, think you'd like Naruto. I mean, <laughs> honestly, from the point I've seen of Naruto, it's fine. Mm-hmm. I don't hate it. It's just Jujutsu Kaisen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Although I have continued one. on with Bleach a little bit. So. You did? You yeah, I'm on like episode 11. Okay. I'm gonna say mm-hmm. nice. It's of what, bad. like 300 or something? Yeah. 300, yeah. Yeah. Seven? Could try watching One Seven. Piece. You got like a thousand oh, yeah. chapters. Oh, wow. oh yeah. and, and going. <laughs> wow. All right. I think I think we've run out of steam. Yeah. More or less. Next week. Well, we, I got some announcements. <sighs> yeah, yeah. What's it Based about? on some past shows that we've watched. Okay. Yeah. Um, Hit me. Mad Geo Record Season 3 finally has a release date. It's okay. four episodes, April 3rd, all at once. So it sounds like it's a movie. Yeah, okay. it's, yes. <laughs> Tiger yeah. and Bunny Season 2 comes out April 8th. It's 25 episodes, but it's going to be the first 13 as one core released at once. So. Okay, sounds yeah. cool. And we'll have to. Yeah. Tokyo Mew Mew is coming out in July. I was going to say and that. Jo- rest... Tokyo Mew Mew Mew, as it's called. <laughs> yep. And, Tokyo uh, Mew Square. Or, yeah, Mew Square. Well, and also. Um, Rest in peace to the author, because uh, she just passed away earlier this month. Oh, that's a damn. I'm so sorry, sad. man. That's bad. May she that's rest in peace. Mm. Okay, so we have those things to look forward to, which I'm assuming at some point you're all going to be taking a look at and doing things on. But more importantly, what's happening moving forward. We're going back to the rest of the live-action anime American adaptations. And next week is nice. You are already dead. Yeah. Do you want to announce it? Go ahead. Fist of the North Star live action. From 1995. Starring... Exactly. So, we're going to come back with that. And after that is Speed Racer, Dragon Ball Evolution, Old Boy, uh, Edge of Tomorrow. Uh, 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 we did Death Note. Forget that. Uh, Ghost in the Shell and the Lead of Battle Angel, and then we'll talk about everything all at once. I don't think I skipped anything. Did you skip anything? I don't think I skipped anything. Yeah. So all of those and more to come. Come back next week. Bye bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Hey, thanks for watching, and if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell icon for notifications. If you enjoy this video, give us a like, and if you haven't already, check out some of our previous episodes, our daily gaming videos, or our parody series, Madoka Magically Abridged. See you next time!